Welcome to County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Thank you for joining us. Some Montgomery County residents are still cleaning up and making repairs to their homes following June's massive derecho. And as many of us know, the threats of more severe weather still exist with hurricane season in full swing until October. Montgomery County wants its residents to be prepared in case of another weather event or emergency. Our Susan Kennedy talked with Ralph Vines from the Office of Consumer Protection about how they are working to educate the consumer in these situations. Tell us a little bit about the Consumer Protection's role in making sure these folks uh, have the proper repairs done. We passed out brochures and literature on that day suggesting that consumers only use licensed Maryland contractors to do the tree removal and to do the improvements. So we know we put the information in their hand. As you can see, it's been six weeks, but this home just barely has tarp and the trees have been moved, but there have been no real major repairs to the property yet. So these things are very time consuming, but it's important the consumer not rush to judgment, that they need to make sure they find a licensed contractor that has the ability to do the full scope of work. What is the role of the Consumer Protection Office in these situations? Are, are you guys out um, pounding the pavement, making sure folks are being properly compensated for and taken care of by these contractors? Well, at the initial height of the storm or right after the initial storm, we are out in neighborhoods that we think that are mostly affected, passing out information. But there's a limited number of us. But the police and other law enforcement agencies are also out there, and they are a resource. If you really feel someone is at your door, they're a crook, they're a scammer, don't be afraid to call the police. They can come out, they can identify these people, and that's a safety for you as the victim. Our role is to try to help the consumer, to inform the consumer. We believe an educated consumer is the best. But then, of course, our secondary role is to process and investigate the complaints. And if we find that it's a violation of the law, we can seek some type of enforcement, whether through civil citations or criminal action against an unlicensed individual. Are we seeing an increase in these folks who are coming in and trying to take advantage of residents? Well, we have two types of incidents. One is, yes, the seasonal or catastrophic contractor. An event happens. They come from everywhere, they're looking for the quick dollar. Then there are the long-term contractors. For example, uh, there's a group of contractors that we now label as travelers, who we know every year come through Maryland, they go up and down the East Coast, and they often do paving work and some driveway work. But well, we're seeing the same thing now with the tree contractors. Warm weather, they come out, but also doing terrible events like storms, they come out. If you have any questions about common home repair scams or if you think you've been a victim of one, you can contact the county's Office of Consumer Affairs at 240-777-3636. I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The Montgomery County Worker Safety and Health Commission will hold a public hearing on safety and health challenges on the job faced by immigrant workers. Testimony will be given by county immigrant workers and also by authorities on occupational safety and health. There will be opening remarks by County Executive Ike Leggett. The hearing will take place on Friday, September 21st, starting at 9.30 in the morning at the Silver Spring Civic Building in downtown Silver Spring. Here's an opportunity where you can recognize someone whose ongoing work, service, and contributions have impacted human and civil rights in the county. The Montgomery County Office of Human Rights is accepting nominations for its seventh Hall of Fame. And here is how you can nominate somebody. The deadline is fast approaching, so the county's Office of Human Rights wants to make sure the public engages in nominating individuals whose work and service have impacted human and civil rights in the county. Applications go through a panel of judges and the ceremony is held in October at the Black Rock Center for the Arts in Germantown. Since 2001, more than 70 individuals have been inducted in a display at the lobby of the Executive Office Building in Rockville. Nomination forms are available online at montgomerycountymd.gov slash human rights or by calling the Office of Human Rights at 240-777-8456. Five, six. Deadline is September 10th. 
Election judges with Spanish-speaking fluency are needed for the 2012 presidential general election. The Montgomery County Board of Elections is seeking bilingual individuals to serve as election judges at polling places on Election Day, Tuesday, November 6. Maryland election law requires that election judges must be registered to vote in the state of Maryland, 17 years of age or older, and a U.S. citizen. Montgomery County residency is not a prerequisite to serve. All election judges will be compensated for training and for election day service. If you are interested, contact the Montgomery County Board of Elections at 240-777-8532 or download an election judge questionnaire from the website at 777vote.org. When we come back, it's graduation for some bioscience students. And Woodman Avenue in Bethesda is officially closed. We'll tell you why, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. Sixteen Montgomery College students recently graduated from a new course specializing in the bioscience field. The course was designed in cooperation with a local business and comes at a time in which qualified employees are desperately needed. Montgomery County Executive Ike Leggett was the keynote speaker at a recent event at Montgomery College's Germantown campus. The occasion was the graduation of the first clinical project management course held at Montgomery College. We are a leading biotechnology hub uh, throughout the entire nation, literally around the world and to the end that we can have collaboration between the private sector, our academic institutions, provide uh, clinical trial uh, practitioners with the skills that they need. The 13-week course was a joint collaboration between Montgomery College and Amerex Clinical Research, a Germantown-based company. We uh, met with Amerex and we said, okay, you know what is needed. Uh, can you help us creating the curriculum? And they said yes. So college met with Amerex, we created the curriculum, and we jointly teach this course. It's a marriage, actually, between the college and Amerex Clinical Research, and actually giving the students a chance to see what clinical research and management of a clinical program is all about. It's actually been in the making for the last two to three years. The state of Maryland is home to approximately 500 bioscience companies, about 300 of which are here in Montgomery County. With the growth of the companies that do clinical trial management for the biotech sector, there has emerged a need for this occupation. Amerex could not find these uniquely talented workers and turned to the college to grow the skill set and the occupation and make it available to companies right here in proximity. We have a need for clinical trial professionals, professionals that we use for our company, and there is a shortage of those individuals. This course was priceless. I felt confident um, to be a leader in the clinical trial, medical, clinical field. The professors were excellent. I've had the opportunity to work with people with a very diverse backgrounds, and that has really helped me um, acquire new knowledge, new experiences, and hopefully I should be able to apply uh, those experiences going forward. Following the event, a number of the graduates received additional good news. Okay. Job offers from Amerex Clinical Research. Yet another example of how Montgomery College is working with the local community to provide endless possibilities. If you are a Smart Trip card user, here's Tom Polk from the county's Department of Transportation to tell us about the new rate adjustments that took place starting on September 1st. Tom? Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. Beginning September 1st, Smart Trip customers will be able to get a $3 rebate for a new card purchase when they register the card online. The card still costs $5, but a $3 credit will be refunded to the card five days after its first use. Smart Trip online registration protects a rider's balance if the card is lost or stolen and allows customers to add value to the card via the web. 
Also starting on September 1st, riders will need a minimum of $1.20 on their SmartTrip card to enter the Metrorail system. For riders using a senior disabled SmartTrip card, the minimum will be $0.35. Cents. This makes SmartTrip consistent with paper fare cards. Riders are encouraged to take advantage of the plastic rechargeable fare card that offers lower fares. For example, bus riders save $0.20 cents a ride, get free bus-to-bus -bus transfers, and a $0.50 cent discount if transferring to rail. This fall, Metro is adding smart trip card vending machines at all Metro Rail stations. For more transit fare information or to purchase a smart trip card, go to Metro's website at wamata.com. We're working to keep you moving. It's official. Woodman Avenue between Bethesda and Miller Avenues is closed. This section of roadway in Bethesda will remain closed for 20 months during construction of a public-private partnership project that includes apartment complexes and underground parking. When completed, the project will triple the number of public parking spaces to over 900. The construction project is scheduled for completion in the fall of 2013. When we come back, some MCPS students got quite a surprise when they returned to their school. We'll tell you what that was all about. And Montgomery College has a new head baseball coach. We'll be right back. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Virgili. When Paint Branch High School students returned to school after summer break, they reunited with a lot of old faces, but were introduced to something entirely new. MCPS TV has a story. For students and staff at Paint Branch High School, 2012-2013 marks the start of a new school year in a new building. This newly modernized school is state of the art, a big improvement over the old building originally constructed in 1969. This new school year is merely a week old, and like the premiere of a new movie, the reviews are positive. This is uh, a beautiful facility. We have an NJROTC program. We have a restaurant management program, which is a full-fledged restaurant. A, a media center that looks like a law library. But I think what's really interesting about the building as well is the pattern in the floor represents the Paint Branch string, which is, uh, you know, what the school was named for. It feels like a campus. You know, it's like almost like a college campus, prepares you for college. These hallways, they're named after famous people or teachers who have made a great influence on the school. It just has a great feel about it. Building designers worked hard to make sure the new spaces support the many programs offered by the school. For example, juniors and seniors interested in a healthcare profession will receive real-world experience on state-of-the-art equipment in the medical careers program. Those first few days when they walk into the patient's room at Holy Cross, they're going to be much more confident, much more at ease because they've already used all that equipment. Classrooms at Paint Branch also offer the latest technology in the fields of science, digital media, and the performing arts. We got brand new state-of-the-art cameras. We've got seven or eight edit bays, brand new headset systems. And the television studio uh, joins and backs into this amazing 900 seat auditorium here at Paint Branch where we can, you know, film any activity going on in the auditorium school wide at a moment's notice. The new building is also a big hit with parents. It's a place where I can see that my, my son is going to flourish in his senior year. Later this year, the school expects to receive the LEED certification for the building's environmentally friendly and energy efficient features. Montgomery College has named Dan Rasher as head coach of the Unified Baseball Program. Here's a story from MC. When MC decided to go to the One College Unified Model for Sports, that naturally led to a lot of changes because it meant there'd only be one MC team per sport. But luckily for MC fans, there's one sport that had no change at the top, and that's baseball. Dan Rasher has been named the head coach of MC's Unified Baseball program, and given his career record on the Germantown campus, it's no wonder why. We've gone to the World Series six out of seven years, and, and one of the things that I'm most proud of is every kid who's played in our program um, has got to experience that everyone that has been here with for two years. We've coached a number of really good kids here and we, we, we have about 25 guys in seven years that have gone 
um, some sort of financial aid or scholarship to a four-year school. And now that MC is unified athletics, there's just one baseball team, and that should help generate even more success. It seems like every year we're one or two players short, you know, in the World Series, and uh, maybe, maybe with the uh, realignment of the schools, uh, we will, um, you know, get that extra player, and it'll help us out and, and get over the hump, and and maybe win the whole thing. Rasher is holding tryouts today because he has holes to fill, having graduated several key players from last year's team. We're looking for guys that want to be here and want to compete. Um, a lot of times we take guys that, that haven't got a lot of uh, exposure in high school and uh, we work with them and they turn out to be some of our better players. You know, it's, an, it's a new chance for them. It's a second chance starting with a new coach. And after the tryouts, the holdovers and new players will play an abbreviated but important schedule of fall games. What we want to do is, as a coaching staff, figure out what we need to work on. We need to, we need to evaluate our players. Uh, figure out what they need to work on, and then we hammer that home in the in the in the, uh, in the winter so to get prepared for the spring. The Kenlands Lakelands 5K is a popular community event for all ages. Recently, it attracted over 1,200 runners to Gaithersburg for what is billed as the largest 5K race in Montgomery County. The first runner to cross the finish line did it with a time of 15 minutes and 14 seconds. My MC Media's Sonia Burke reports. The 5K course loops through the communities of Kentlands and Lakelands and starts right here on Main Street, where the runners take off in waves. On your mark. Go. There are so many people registered for this race that for safety, the start is organized in waves with the fastest runners taking off first. It's the largest 5K in Montgomery County. And I think part of the reason is the setting. Uh, I think part of the reason is because of all the volunteers who really spend the whole year volunteering to get this to, be, to run so smoothly. We've got course marshal at every intersection. We've got two water stops on the course and which is unusual for a 5k but we just you know this is for the runners it's great to see people out cheering running with your friends and neighbors uh, just a great community event before the 5k begins hundreds of kids sporting number one race bibs take part in races dubbed fun runs where they run an abbreviated course down main street and receive medals at the finish line another awesome runner chan robbins of arlington virginia who won a 75 to 79 year old age group with a time of 26 minutes and seven seconds. So what was his strategy? It's a terrible feeling to, to start gagging and choking in the last mile when you've gone out too fast. So I just paced myself well. These two Gaithersburg City Council members are racing for bragging rights. This is the fifth year anyway. and in races we've we've run against each other where it's two to two. So this is like the rubber match right here. I don't think so. I think I'm ahead. I think I'm, I think it's three to two right now. So this year Ashman wins the council challenge and Sesma congratulates him with some victory water and a few parting words. Well, what do you expect? The guy's got 18 years on me. He's lighter than I am. The you know, he's a natural start. athlete, but, the excuses but go I was just glad to be here to compete because Judd is a gracious competitor. For my MC Media, I'm Sonia Burke reporting. When we come back, artists get ready to audition to perform during the county's Martin Luther King celebrations. And World of Montgomery Festival returns to Wheaton. We'll tell you when the festivities will take place. If you're a first year or new international student at Montgomery College, then make sure to sign up for a first year seminar class. Class sessions focus on strategies that will help you succeed and guide you in designing the best possible education plan. MC fall sports are in full swing, so come on out and support the Raptors. Check out a volleyball match or a women's or men's soccer game. Their schedules are online at montgomerycollege.edu athletics. And don't miss your last chance to view the Portraits of Life LGBT Stories of Being exhibit on display at the Morris and Gwendolyn K. Fritz Foundation Arts Center on MC's Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus. The exhibit closes September 17th. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website. 
Welcome back to County Report this week. I'm Lauren Avergelli. Montgomery County's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorative Committee has announced a talent call for individuals and groups interested in performing in the 2013 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration. Auditions will take place on Friday, September 14th, starting at 5.30 p.m. at Montgomery College in the Music Building of the Rockville Campus. The committee is seeking musical and dance performers, as well as instrumental selections, spoken word, and skit performances. Those selected will perform at the Montgomery County's celebration on Sunday, January 20th, 2013, at the Music Center at Strathmore. Those who are interested in auditioning must RSVP to mlkcelebration at hotmail.com in order to receive a three-minute audition time. For more information, you may call 240-567-4203. With the colder months around the corner, time is approaching to start planning on container gardening inside the home. Here are some tips from our friends at Brookside Gardens. Hi, I'm Ellen Hartraft, a horticultural supervisor at Brookside Gardens, and I'd like to talk to you about container gardening. If you have a townhouse, condominium, or apartment, and you'd like to bring nature a little bit closer to you, you can garden in containers for very low cost and low maintenance. This container you can purchase at your local hardware store, and it's planted with annuals for summer long color. It's got papyrus, euphorbia, and coleus. You can select plants for sun or shade. Now this container I made myself at a very low cost using Portland cement, perlite, and shredded paper. Um, this is a year-round container planting. You can create miniature landscapes using hardy evergreens such as this spruce. You can complement it with a beautiful foliage color and contrast with the coral bells and the golden sedums. You can use herbs and it's a year-round landscape in miniature. If you'd like more information, contact Brookside Gardens Library. In our Pet of the Week segment, let's go to Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society who's asking you to adopt this male dog. Kathy? Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And we're here with a very scared little dog. This is Versace. He is an unneutered male. He will be neutered upon adoption. And he's only nine months old and he's just scared out of his mind. He's shaking, but he's so sweet. He's playful. If you have a senior citizen in your family that is looking for a pet, this is the pet for you. He is very easy to control, the little guy here. He walks well on a leash. He's quiet. He's sweet. He gets along with kids, so he'd be wonderful with grandchildren. He gets along with other dogs and cats. This is the ideal little guy for someone who doesn't want a difficult dog because this would be a very easy pet to have. Very well mannered. Very, very sweet. He was a give up and quite frankly we can't figure out why anybody would give this dog up. He's very, very nice. But right now he's scared. He's just beginning to settle down a little bit now. He's not shaking as much as he was when he first came in. But he wants to go home. He needs a home. And it's been proven over and over again that houses with pets really do very well with senior citizens. They do very well with pets because it lowers blood pressure when you have a dog in your lap, a nice calm dog like this that you can pet and stroke. And even it's been proven that families with pets, the kids have fewer al incidents of asthma or allergies, if they don't have allergies already to begin with. But asthma has been really been a problem with a lot of kids lately, and households with pets do not have as much asthma for, with their children. So come on down and get this little guy. He wants to go home with you. His name is Versace. He's very, very sweet. And remember, for August, September, and October, the Montgomery County Humane Society is participating in the ASPCA Rachel Ray $100,000 challenge. What they're challenging us to do is to adopt at least 300 more pets during August through October than we did last year. And we are desperately trying to meet that goal. And we need your help. So if you're ever thinking about adopting a pet, between August and, and October is a good time because we're having numerous specials. Just go onto our website, mchumane.org, and find out more about the challenge and the different adoption specials that we're going to be having during that time. Give us a call at 240-773-5967, or as I said, visit us on the web at mchumane.org. 
Mark your calendars for Sunday, October 21st. World of Montgomery Festival returns to the Wheaton Triangle, filled with entertainment from around the globe, international food and craft vendors, and a health fair. World of Montgomery will start at noon, and for more information, visit worldofmontgomery.com. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching.